coming up on your transformation station. But when an emotional storm comes, like when you become angry or when you become frustrated or you are down, dejected, you can somehow, if you have practiced this for some time, you can have that a little separation between your emotions and yourself. You may be able to see that gap. And the moment you see your emotional storms, as if you are seeing it from outside, somehow it tries to fade away or it reduces its uh, bite or sting. And sometimes you may want to use anger, but then that's a different thing. You are not under the control of anger, but you are controlling the anger. Welcome to your transformation station. It is your transformation station. We're tapping in to surpassing expectations from the most successful people in the modern day and honing in on new foresight, methodologies, and clairvoyance you never knew. This is your transformation station with your host, Greg Favaza. Now let's get into it. to have a definition of success. If I could go back, there's, there's not many things that I would go back for, but... What do you do when you lose your purpose? It's okay to struggle. It's okay that you're not okay. And I am your host, Greg Favaza. Together, we will go on a journey. This show is all about surpassing our internal dialogue. Rediscovering your true identity. Honing new foresight. We have a chance to make the world a better place for our children. Start living in the example today and become your future self tomorrow. If you can leave our viewers with some good advice to follow, what would you let them know? These things that you're afraid to do, go do them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your transformation station with your one and only, of course, Greg Favaza. Suppose you're someone aspiring to learn how to connect to the world. How can you create a transformation in others if there's no transformation in yourself? This question is often what I think about. Your transformation station focuses on 30 day challenges, three hour refinement, connecting clarity, the idyllic life, interviews, investing your time. This is your transformation on how to decode ourselves through the realization of others, a transformative experience and establish our own transformation. I'd like to give a big shout out to Vernon Brown out in Richmond, Virginia. Thank you so much for the support, Vernon. I do appreciate the kind words. For those that have been a subscriber that still continuously stop by, I appreciate every one of you. Today's guest, we are featuring Dr. Krishna Bada. He brings a transformative tool for our toolbox. This episode teaches us how to learn how to truly be silent and stress relieving benefits that comes with that. He brings a new lens to the table where we learn about intermittent silence. Now, let's get into this. Tapping in to surpassing expectations from the most successful people in the modern day and honing in on new foresight, methodologies, and clairvoyance you never knew. This is your transformation station with your host, Greg Favaza. Dr. Bada, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. There you go. I like your background there. Thank you. Dr. Bahada, welcome to your transformation station. Thank you. How are you doing today? I am doing good. It was, uh, I'm so excited to be here with you. I really do appreciate your time tremendously. I've been going through your work. How did this, this intermittent silence, how did you come upon this idea 
in your life's journey? So I've been meditating for a long time. And one of the things in meditation is that the thoughts, your mind comes in the way most of the time. That's the main barrier. So how do we put something in our day-to-day life that can be helpful and also help you if you want to go in deeper meditation? And as I was working on that, I found that uh, intermittent silence, which has its own four components, um, can guide, you know, can be a doorway to deeper meditation, but by itself, it can be very helpful in giving brain some rest and also be applicable in day-to-day life. Like uh, if somebody comes to you and says something, you are not compelled to respond immediately. You can have a strategic response. You, You will get that extra pause where you can think about what to say or how to respond. So it has some practical advantages and also it becomes a doorway to meditation if you wanted to go deeper. Are you saying self-awareness as far as being present? So self-awareness is uh, a little different than being silent. So when you are silent, yes, awareness is there. Awareness is there. Mindfulness is there. You have to have those. Otherwise, you will fall asleep or, you know, you're not there. So those things have to be there. But at the same time, by being without words or, you know, by closing your mouth, which is one of the steps in intermittent silence, you are giving that part of brain rest, which carries on with the processing of those words or, or making those words happen. Similarly, if you close your eyes, the visual pathway gets a rest as well. So it uh, it does provide an extra step of resting to the brain. Would it be like our brains are comparable to computer? 70 tabs open and running, similar to how we are busy or productive. And if we were to close out those tabs, we can compare that to closing our mouths, our eyes, and allowing our brain to essentially catch up. Yeah, I didn't think of that analogy, but that sounds like a good analogy. I mean, it is, uh, we have 86 billions of neurons, and uh, many of them, if you give them rest, they will be thankful to you. What have you noticed from your practice? What benefits have you reaped from intermittent silence? So intermittent silence, uh, basically you practice 10 minutes a day. But those 10 minutes, once you start practicing, then it starts coming inside your other 24 hours. It starts helping you in other parts of your life where this silence can give you that... uh, this mysterious uh, personality rather than somebody who is an open book. And uh, it can be a very good tool for, you know, when you negotiate where you can have your words and you have to speak sometimes. You don't want to be silent in in, an interview. So there is a role of, uh, you know, speaking as well, but at least you can think about it before you speak. And that little extra pause will give you it. As a famously, many people, you know, many famous people have been people who are silent or, or more often more silent than many others. Being proactive versus reactive. You know, absolutely. It does percolate, you know, it also, as you said, mindfulness and awareness, those things also become part of it. Because when you are silent, you are more of an observer. So you can observe yourself, you can observe others, Mm -hmm. and uh, be more mindful. It just adds to your general personality and day-to-day life. We've spoken on the phone uh, last week, and I'm having a little trouble still grasping this because I get it confused with 
almost similar to mindfulness practices, such as um, box breathing, yeah. right? That in my own time to help me do the things that I need to do and be aware of what's going on from the outside looking in, how can we differentiate between mindfulness and intermittent silence? So mindfulness uh, is a part of, I mean, you need your, so mind has two parts. One is minding and the other is mindfulness, at least in my description, you know, that's how I describe in my relax app and, you know, in my mind. So mind has two components. One is minding and the other is uh, the mindfulness. Mindfulness is something that you need. And uh, minding is something that you want to give rest to. And how do you give minding the rest is by just, so I said four components. So one is, you know, close your mouth. The second one is um, close your eyes. Third one is become a silent listener. So any sound that is surrounding you, any sound, there is no sound is a distraction. And you just listen to it without processing it, without giving any weight to it, without judging it. Let it just pass through. And your thoughts, which is the part of the minding, let it also pass through. Just be an observer to it. So all these four steps are there. Mindfulness is like a camera, a camcorder. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. So in these 10 minutes, yes, you want your mindfulness to be there so that you record your, you know, something that's watching your um, silence. That observer is the mindfulness. So yes, mindfulness comes into play, but the silent part has those four structured components. Is this practice set up for a specific target audience? I don't know if there is a target audience because it is going to help all of us. But I have been working to see if I can get it into schools and younger age group. As one of my friends, you know, he's a a CEO of a construction company. It's a large construction company. I was talking to him about this. And he said, wait a minute, when we were in school, sometimes our teachers will come and say, put your head down and five minutes of quiet time when, you know, when they were in school. Mm -hmm. This is something a little more structured, but that's what it is. Quiet time with yourself. And as if it becomes a component in school system or a younger age group, when you start practicing, you can build your personality accordingly and have that silence component in your life because most of the time we are very busy you know we are busy either talking to somebody or watching movies or with our cell phone we have structured our lives so that silence doesn't come into play in most of our lives i i really do agree with you on that can we rewind a little bit you were talking about the it's almost like a ripple from this practice as long as we stay consistent and consecutive we can start to see the benefits what benefits have you seen so the benefits of course is uh, as we talked about you know your responses to emails or conversations those or negotiations but the biggest benefit i see is uh, how you deal with emotional storms so This is a structured, like, you know, if you are practicing tennis, that's one thing, you know, you have a practice game with your coach or with your friend. But when you go in a match, it's a totally different situation. So the same thing, you practice in a controlled environment, but when an emotional storm comes, like when you become angry or when you become frustrated or you are down, dejected, you can somehow, if you have practiced this for some time, you can have that a little separation between your emotions and yourself. You may be able to see that gap. And the moment you see your emotional storms, as if you are seeing it from outside, somehow it tries to fade away or it 
reduces its uh, bite or sting. And sometimes you may want to use anger, but then that's a different thing. You're not under the control of anger, but you are controlling the anger. Definitely understand you on a very deep level with that. I continuously work in, in my own time on my routines I do in the morning. And when I don't do my routines, I can see and feel a difference in my reactive state when I'm having a conversation with somebody. If they say something I don't agree with, it's like an automatic response. No, I don't agree. But when I do mindfulness practices, I'm able to, I can feel the transparency within my own thoughts, kind of like halting me and it's like, hold on, try to look at it from their point of view because I control my emotions. Exactly. Can you give our listeners a snapshot on your history, where you grew up and how that led into the medical field? And then how did it lead, the medical field lead into the creation of your most recent book that's been out? and your app? So, yeah, I mean, I grew up in India in a small village. And uh, one of the things, of course, you know, when we grow up, you know, you want to be something. And my mother had this dream. Uh, she wanted me to be a doctor, and somehow it translated into a reality. So, and uh, I specialize in robotic surgery and urology. So. I've been in practice for a long time. That's, a, that's, the, that's the doctor's path. But at the same time, I was very interested from the beginning in spirituality or exploring myself, I would say, because sometimes the spirituality and religion kind of get mixed up. But it's more of a exploration. I mean, deeper inside, why, you know, why do we exist or where do we go when we die? And these uh, conversations happen uh, many times and we just let it pass. So I did, uh, even when I was in medical school, when I first joined, I was uh, more into meditation. And of course, I did the medicine. I did well in that. But I spent a lot of time doing meditation or going to, um, yeah, I met a lot of uh, so-called, you know, spiritual gurus and and uh, learned a lot in, in doing that. And when you went to meditation camps, you know, like a, a week or 10 days camps. And with it was, it was life was good. Yeah. <laughs> with this time that you spent doing these meditation practices, was that for your own benefit? Yes and no. I mean, uh, I did it because I enjoyed it. But yes, it did benefit me. Uh, one of the things, uh, Greg, it's hard to prove, but if you are on to a path, which is, you know, like not only meditation, but anything you want to do good in the world, somehow the universe kind of aligns with you, supports you. You may not see that, obviously, uh, it's because you can't have a side-by-side -side comparison, but I totally believe that it does happen. So, yes, um, it helped me in both sides. That's what I was trying to say. It helped me spiritually, but also it helped me grow and uh, be a good doctor. I like that, that the universe just aligns in the way that it's supposed to be. If you're consistent with your passions, with your desired outcome. And a lot of us, we, we can't really see that unless we look back on it. At least I've noticed that with the average person. They can kind of see it from looking back, but with people who practice this mindfulness, intermittent silence, it's like you can almost see the play-by-play -play happening in the present moment where you're allowed, you're able to detach from your body and kind of see the direction you're going or the direction you could be going if you stay consistent with these practices. Greg, you know, that's uh, very nicely put. And, and new doors do open and uh, new experiences do happen. Uh, so it's not like uh, there is an end point of mindfulness or 
end point of meditation. It depends upon which direction of meditation you are taking. One of the meditation described in our app, relax with two X and R-E-L-A-X-X. So you can go to relax.org and download the app. But one of the meditation I really love and, you know, uh, is uh, called Yoga Nidra, which is a conscious deep sleep. And it sounds contradictory. How can you be conscious when you are deep sleep? But uh, it is. It is a real phenomena. And uh, somehow, if you get into that, you can use that yoga nidra or you can use your sleep to brainstorm and some new ideas can come there. And so you are sleeping. Your sleep is surrounding you. Sleep is cuddling you all around. But still, you are aware, you can use your mind to process things. Of course, you're not moving. You're not keeping your eyes open. But at the same time, you can use your brain as you want. I mean, you can just not do anything or you can think about something. And many of my thoughts and things that have come up have come up from there. So when you, with that app, which is excellent transition, I want to get to the book here in a second with this app are you saying that it helps me sleep and works my brain at the same time like can you explain what's playing when i'm in my REM sleep or REM cycle i should say so REM sleep and uh, those are the of course scientific descriptions of sleep REM and REM and non REM but this one is a like there is a practice and there is a whole process in the app. So just before you go to sleep, you just switch it on. It will guide you through, take your, do, do your, your sleep. And you keep a you know, uh, um, portion of your awareness going through with you in the sleep. So then you will suddenly see that the sleep, I mean, if you do a practice, I mean, it took me a month when I started feeling this. You really go there and then you see the sleep coming and surrounding you. Sleep is not something you can force upon yourself. I mean, we create situation. We lie down, we put the comforter on, we switch off the light. So you create a surrounding where sleep happens to you. In the same way meditation happens to you, these things you cannot force on yourself. You can just prepare the grounds for you. So when the sleep comes, it really, you can feel the sleep, beauty, beautiful feeling. Um, and if I can get it, you can get it. So it's nothing, you know, no magic to it. It's a question of practicing it for a certain amount of time. And it's about a half an hour, 45 minute meditation. So it takes you through down there. And then you just uh, are there and you will find that your awareness has now gone deeper. So it's not like conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. You can take your awareness down there um, Interesting. Okay. to a deeper level. And you still be fresh with the sleep. So it's not like you are disturbing the sleep. You just can experience the sleep that in a way that you have never experienced before. That's really interesting. It, what's the name of that app called again? The app is Relax, R-E-L-A-X-X. And in that, there are several meditations. There are many chakra-based meditation, but one of the meditation is called Yoga Nidra. Yoga Nidra is basically yogic sleep. How does that play out? So, yeah, I mean, there is a music and it, it guides you. It takes you through the, so you just follow the, you know, uh, the instructions and the music. Just flow with the, go with the flow. And... Uh, do it for uh, every night for, I mean, you will go to sleep every night, right? So just before going to sleep, go with the music, go with this meditation. And one of the thing about um, any of these meditations, Greg, and I always mention this, this is a very old um, book called Bhagavad Gita or Gita in short. And uh, in that book, Krishna asks Arjun, that's about 5,000 years ago, how do I control my mind? You know, this mind is always wavering and going all places. Mm -hmm. 
And his answer was so beautiful. I, I love that answer. He says, practice, Arjun, practice. So there's nothing better than practice. You know, it's like we practice, and I always say tennis or golf to be good. The same way you practice meditation to get to where you want to go. And, you know, you will always experience something new and something deeper. Um, one of the mistakes that happens, Greg, in meditation, and I'm sure in mindfulness, is like you have experienced something beautiful and you want that back. You want that to happen again. And somehow the more you want, the, the, the less it's likely to happen. So just let new experiences come. For those that have trouble sleeping, I'm guilty of that. I'm trying to get back on my routine and somehow I get sidetracked or I think I might stay up 24 hours to catch up on my work when reality that isn't going to do me any good, but do more harm. Would that help me get back on track? Yes. Uh, yes, it will. Uh, with a little uh, point that I want to mention here is that it basically improves the quality of sleep, not the quantity of sleep. So when you do a lot of meditation, you may not uh, sleep or may not need that many hours of sleep. But what you get is, you know, complete relaxation or refreshing um, life before and after. So uh, I won't say that you will sleep longer, but whatever you sleep, the quality will be really amazing. With the practice, is there a right way to practice? I guess that's kind of like a, that's kind of a loaded question here. So there is a, there are many meditations. One thing I believe that you should have a meditation package. Like if you do uh, practice a yoga nidra, practice it for two or three months. Uh, because that's one thing. But in the morning, you can have another meditation. Like there is a meditation there called power chakra. So I'm the first one as far as I know, who has taken mantras and put it, you know, associated with chakra. So this power chakra meditation, I wouldn't do it at night because that might, you may not sleep well because it creates so much of an energy. But yeah, you can do power chakra in the morning. You can do yoga nidra at night, or you can do mindfulness, uh, uh, you know, in the morning for 10 minutes. And, uh, all these meditations or mindfulness practice or intermittent silence, you do it for short intervals, but their effect lasts, um, you know, maybe whole day or a week. But you still need to practice to stay um, really. The funny thing is that once you start doing it, it kind of becomes addictive. Yeah. Uh, like I have been meditating and I know I, I love that and I keep doing it. That brings me to my next question as far as somebody who doesn't practice this way of fitness. I'll say with fitness, it's a mental consistency. But is intermittent silence a rigid theory or is there data to back up its claims? So intermittent silence is a new uh, terminology that I started. So there may not be a lot of data based on intermittent silence, but there is a lot of work done on silence itself. And that silence was not that structured. So yes, I mean, if you Google silence, there is a lot of videos and, and articles on that. Intermittent silence should not be much different because it's a more structured way of uh, practicing silence. You said structure. I think that's very important way of thinking when it just comes down to personal development within mindfulness, within intermittent silence, within physical fitness during like a workout. If you structure the, the application, it can be very beneficial. True. There is another way to look at it, Greg. All these things that we talk about, like silence or uh, being proactive or responding properly can be taught uh, taught to us and our mind will learn by discipline. And that's what we do. Many courses, there are many courses out there how to be successful 
and they have five points or 10 points that we all learn. So what is the difference? I mean, why should we do intermittent silence or meditation or mindfulness? So the difference is here. I can be silent. I can impose silence on you, me and myself. Suppose we are talking about silence. So I can read about silence. I can practice silence. I can just uh, become that. But what intermittent silence or meditation will do is that it will grow from inside. So it's no more imposed silence. Now silence grows from within you. So there are people who are successful and they have never practiced intermittent silence or meditation. But they have learned how or train their mind to be the same by imposing on, on themselves. You see the difference I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is that they gotten successful through their actions, through their hard work, but they sacrificed their own the vitality or well being their own well being of that success. They got everything they wanted. They're just not happy inside. Yeah, because it didn't grow with them. They imposed it on themselves. So there is some sort of kind of, you know, uh, pressure they put on themselves to get to where they were. Um, the app talks about, you know, the app talks about it. And I generally talk about that. We or most people talk about body and mind. There is another component which I call the flame or the flame of consciousness. We all have a body, a mind, and an individual consciousness, not the general cosmic consciousness, but we all have individual consciousness. So these three elements, we focus on body and mind. We ignore the flame of consciousness. Some of us are born with a higher flame of consciousness and don't burn out. But there are people who don't have that same level of consciousness and they don't work on it, but they have worked a tremendously or a high amount for the body and mind, which has brought the success to them, but their flame has been left behind. And that's what you are saying, that you know, that portion is, is out of sync. Very well put. And Interesting. Is that from your writing? I came across your book and it really grabs my attention. Journey from life to life. No, this part is not mentioned in Journey from Life to Life, but it is in the app. And I have a new book coming out, which is Art of Intermittent Silence and Meditation. So that's going to put, you know, all, many of these things in that. I'll be sure to link all everything that you've spoken about in the show notes for our audience to be able to click the link to. Oh, thank you, Greg. Thanks for giving me this platform. So is there any steps that we can start applying intermittent silence to our daily life for those that are non-believers, but then those who are the innovators that love to eat this stuff up, that love that 1% that change in their overall well-being? So for believers and non-believers, I have only one simple advice, uh, Greg. Mind, be friends with your mind because mind is going to be with you whether you like it or not. Don't call it names because whatever you want to do, mind has to agree first. It has to, it, you know, it has to give you the permission that, okay, now you can go and meditate or now you can go and, practice intermittent silence, or you can go and eat good food. So be friends with mind. Don't think of mind as adversary, which many of us start thinking at times. I like that. Is there any general guidelines that we can give our listeners so they can start this process of adding intermittent silence into their lives? Yeah. I mean, uh, you can add intermittent silence in many spaces, you know, like if you're flying, I mean, in COVID times, we are not flying. So you are flying, you are in the plane 10 minutes. You can put that timer on in the Relax app and it will guide you through the 10 minutes. You are waiting on the air, airport. I mean, you can just close your eyes and be 
mindful about it. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I, I like to do it when I'm hiking or if I'm going to, to the coast of Maine. I'll find a bench or a rock and lie down 10 minutes and put this uh, little timer on and 10 minutes of silence, listen to the, you know, the breeze, the leaves rustling, the birds, you know, chirping, waves crashing. I mean, those sounds really, the nature sounds help you go deeper in your intermittent silence. Are you an outside kind of person, doctor? I love to, I love hiking. I love, I mean, I, I'm a bad golfer, but I love golfing. (laughs) I have the reason why I asked, I came across one of your videos you were giving to a class and it caught my attention when I believe this is the first time you came to Missouri was on your honeymoon and you happened to stop by this park. And it was just kind of funny because it's like, like out of all the places, that's where I grew up and that's where I currently live. So there is a different Missouri in India. Oh, wow. It's a hill station. That was my honeymoon. Oh. So, so not <laughs> Missouri here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was, a, yeah, I, I, yeah, we love that place. We still go back sometimes. Excellent. I really do like that. But as we begin to close could you prescribe some good advice for our listeners to start implementing today? Well, you know, try to make it simple. That way, that's my advice. So if you are uh, practicing intermittent silence, uh, you can do it uh, as we talked about, you know, different spaces where um, you want to do it. For mindfulness, you can do it right in the morning when you wake up, you know, just 10 minutes, live life in slow motion. But it's always good to do any of these practices, same time, same place, and same duration, because somehow that place and time starts waiting for you. You you will start feeling that, that, you know, it's calling, happening from within, as if, you know, the time, place, and the space starts working with you, and you become just become part of the whole universe, rather than just be an isolated island. Sometimes I like being in isolation. I tend, I'm an introvert, so I've always noticed myself kind of fading into the distance from crowds because I like that peace. I don't like to be around chaos. So introvert is okay, but introvert can still be part of the universe rather than an island. So I didn't mean be part of the universe is like you have to be outgoing, you have to socialize, you have to go party. You can be with yourself, but the trees, the, you know, the wind, the sound, I mean, just expand your be your inner self to fill the room as, you know, or fill the house or fill the, you know, whole entire surrounding. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You're still introvert, but it's still you are, not a small introvert, you know. <laughs> I like that. No, yeah. it's like uh, allowing yourself to be yourself and embracing your vulnerabilities as your authentic self. That's that's a beautiful way to put it. Yeah. Thank you. A weird question and a run-on statement. There are roughly eight billion people on this planet. If you had a chance to connect with them and out of those people, people who are capable of getting an email and responding, what would you send to each one of those individuals? Spend some time with yourself. And uh, that could be intermittent silence, that could be mindfulness, that could be meditation, but get into the habit of spending that five minutes or 10 minutes a day with yourself. Be an introvert for 10 minutes, you know. And uh, somehow it's going to transform your life. I like that. For our listeners, how can they get in touch with you? And where can they find this app and learn more about your upcoming books? So on my website, Relax with 2X, 
relaxx.org. There is download link for the app. There is also a contact form. And uh, please do uh, encourage your listeners to put, you know, send me a contact um, question or whatever, and uh, I'll try to respond. Excellent. That's fantastic. And that, that, that is everything. I really do appreciate you coming on the show. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's uh, It was very nice to talk to you before this uh, show. And of course, nice to be here. Krishna, I really do appreciate your time. Alrighty, I'll be in touch with you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you have not already done so. But leave us a review. Let us know how we can continue to improve your transformation station. I appreciate every one of you for tuning in. And I look forward to the next episode on your transformation station. You've been listening to your transformation station, rediscovering your true identity and purpose on this planet. We hope you enjoyed the show and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. Join us weekly on Monday for the YTS challenge and bi-weekly on Wednesday for the exclusive interviews at 8 p.m. Central Time. In the meantime, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at YTS The Podcast. We'll be back soon. Until then, this is your transformation station signing off.